All right, I got two magnetrons in there, but before I turn both on at once, I want to do an agitation test. So we're going to turn the first magnetron on and only the first one, and then we're going to rotate the blades. Now, I'm not going to rotate the blades up close because, as you guys remember, every time I rotate the blades in the past, that's when it exploded. So I have this cord that literally goes back and 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 back. And back. Pretty much really safe, right? Because I'm so far away now. And I can just tug on it. Well, it needs to be higher up. Yeah, you see that? Boom. Blades will rotate one, well, like a quarter of a rotation. But that will be enough for any trapped vapor to all release itself. So we'll see if this thing can hold up to the pressure. If it can't, I'm going to be far away. If it can, then we are one step closer to this, the dream. So I am scared, but at least I can be far away. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on. All right, let's do this. Well, that was underwhelming, wasn't it, mate? I'm over here ready for it to go boom. I almost dropped my damn camera playing around with y'all. Well, I mean, I'm glad it didn't explode. Oh, I see why the shaft is leaking now. Damn it. All right, I got it on there again. Um, I just had to compress this mechanical spring even more. It's that black rubber bit. That's what's actually making the seal. The rest is just there to um, help it. But you see, it's stationary while everything else is rotating. That's how you want it. It seems it's still moving a little bit, but we'll see. We're going to turn this on again and um, do the test again. Oh, piss. The bloody thing fell off. Bloody hell, mate. Now i got to go over there. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? Get this man a shoe, yeah? Get this man a shield. Yeah, we got it, baby. Oh, bloody hell, man. Oh. Well, I mean, it's not exploding yet. Yeah? Very anticlimactic again. I thought there'd be a big burst of vapor. There wasn't really anything. Let's turn it off and take a look. So I'm going to turn the argon on, see if the water bubble will shoot out. Because if it does, that means that there's, there were no leaks formed on the shaft or anywhere else in the rotation of the shaft. And if it does leak somewhere, that lets us know where. Um, okay, so turn this on. This on. Water bubbler, look, it's it's coming out. So it didn't blow up. It legit, it did. Let's see what happens if I rotate this with the water bubbler on. Still gonna put my dang safety glasses on, but it shouldn't be anything explosive because the microwaves are not even on, right? I just want to see how much more vapor forms with agitation. Yeah. Can't really tell a difference. All right, we're going to be running three at once very soon. I'm going to do a quick test of all the fans and magnetrons individually. Same typical procedure. We'll let it run for a little bit, and then we will agitate it, testing the fans. Testing 
magnetrons. Magnetrons work, oxygen already pushed out, let's get started. All right, let's try the agitation. Because it is really quite building up every time I move it a little bit. Goodness, that's a lot of pressure in there, guys. A lot. That thing is jetting out. It is jetting out, mate. Oh my goodness. You can't see it on camera. That thing is a jet. Oh, we got a waveguide leaking. Number two. Number two waveguide started leaking. It ruptured. You have to turn it off. So just as I was about to do an agitation test here, waveguide 2 sprung a leak. Now we'll need to open this up to see um, exactly the, the, the forensics of it um, to kind of grasp what happened and can it be fixed or if, it, if we exceeded um, the pressure um, that this can withstand the temperatures. So, as we can see, I just took the waveguide off, and it was a clear puncture. We can actually kind of see um, the field. We can see the hot spot was right here in the middle here. And why did this happen? There's a microwave transparent material. Well, what could have happened is some of the va so many vapors got on the um, on other side of the surface here, and they just collected, and then they condensed into an oil or something, and then that absorbed the microwaves and caused it to go super critical. Kind of like when we put the water glass on these and the water wasn't completely evaporated. Another thing is we did have this magnetron on which is right across from it. So perhaps um, the waves kind of met each other and then it kind of just destroyed itself. Um, that's another option for why this could have happened. Um, what's interesting to me is why it happened um, for, for none of the other ones but just this one in particular. So obviously I need to completely replace this sheet. Um, yeah, look at it. It's completely brittle. This is fiberglass, you know, and you can see it's completely brittle now. Um, at least that hot spot. And then the other areas are just like fiberglass, nice and rigid. But this area, it pretty much like, yeah, like look at that. It just, it's almost like it melted it. And um, so I don't know why this happened, but you know, no biggie. We 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 gotta figure, you know, live and we learn, figure these things out as we go, really. Um, you know, maybe it was just a fluke, right? Maybe there's like a, a very rare chance. But what I want to try next then is instead of running this one and that, I want to run this and this and and this one, right? So it's all like none of them are going to be across from each other. And I want to see if that would do a similar effect or if it was just the fact that there was three of these because the internal vapor temperature did reach 142 Fahrenheit which was the highest it ever been before it was only 110 so that's actually quite a huge increase from just one magnetron so clearly you know some some different things were going on in there higher pressures higher um, temperatures by a lot so but it's good to see that this did not fail because of pressure um, it only failed because of temperature now even though that's not really necessarily a good thing I feel like it's better that it didn't fail from pressure because the pressure is really more of the dangerous thing in my opinion if we have things failing from pressure. Um, different here, I have a trifecta of three materials I've all used in the past as microwave dielectric materials. So this is Teflon, this is the fiberglass that we were using just then with a the silicone coating, this is mica. I want to use this 
Teflon here put down first, right? This is not really made to make it airtight, but this is primarily to protect it from oil because, you know, it's oil and water don't stick to Teflon. They kind of just roll off. So in theory, that will protect that uh, this from absorbing any oil, the, the fiberglass, and then that will protect it from making that hole happen, the um, supercriticality of the magnetron. And then this mica will just be like a last ditch thing to where like if this did go super critical, this will be there to help. But it really won't do anything because honestly, um, this mica is not even ready for pressure. But I'm just going to put it there. We want to see what happens. Three and four on. One, three, and four. Shoes on, safety glasses, gloves, face shield, all that type of stuff. Oh, look, we got the window and the light on. You can see in there. Yes, sir. That's nice. I like that. Anyways. So, as you can see, there really isn't anything in there anymore. But, you know, some carbon remains. There's a little piece of cardboard in there, too. Um... That's probably why no vapor was forming. Um, even when we look through here, we don't see anything. So let me put some more plastic in here. So I got a plastic bag here. You see, I just put some carbon in there. I'm not using the shredded plastic just yet until I can really confirm this thing is safe and runs, blah, blah, blah. Because I'm sure with that having such a high surface area, it's going to degrade even quicker, which means even more pressure. So we just kind of want to take it slow. So I'm just going to stuff this in here. And that should, you know, degrade pretty well. The flange is leaking. Let's turn it off. Now we're going to turn three on. We have two. Now we're going to do three. Three is stable. Now we're going to agitate it and see if there's any failure points. Three magnetrons. Let's go! <laughs> Three magnetrons with agitation, baby. What do you say about that, homie? No explosions around here. And by the way, through that window, there's some stuff going on. Like, every time I agitate it, it starts lighting up in there. It's crazy. That thing is fuming. Look at it. Look at that, man. Look at that jetting out like that. Pshaw! Pshaw! Y'all, look at that pressure. Oh my goodness. Goodness, man. This is powerful. This is three. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Yeah. So at this point, I'm quite sure all the oxygen's pushed out. If it's not, we have the water bubble. There was a flashback arrestor. I want to see if we can light this. All right, I do have this thing recording, so if anything goes wrong. Rest in peace to me, right? Uh, it's not lighting. Well, it's, hey, I'd rather it not light than it explode, right? Let's go, though. Look in that window. That window is like a lightning storm. We got three on. Let's turn on four.
four magnetrons. Four magnetrons on right now. Four. We're gonna do an agitation test now. If we can pass the agitation test without busting somewhere, that's really, really good. But if it does bust, I can't really blame it. It's a ton of pressure, a lot of heat, a lot of power.